Mahayana Shradhapada, Shastra attributed to Asbagosha. Translated by Yoshido, S. Hakita. Copyright 1967, Columbia University Press. Copyright 1967, Columbia University Press. Invocation. Chapter 2. The Correction of Evil Attachments. All evil attachments originate from biased views. If a man is free from bias, he will be free from evil attachments. There are two kinds of biased view. One is the biased view held by those who are not free from the belief in Atman, i.e., ordinary men. The other is the biased view held by those who believe that the components of the world are real, i.e., the Hinayanists. I, the biased views held by ordinary men. There are five kinds of biased views held by ordinary men which may be discussed. Hearing that it is explained in the sutra that the Dharmakaya of the Tathagata is, in the final analysis, quiescent, like empty space, ordinary men think that the nature of the Tathagata is, indeed, the same as empty space, for they do not know that the purpose of the sutra is to uproot their adherence. Question, how is this to be corrected? Answer, the way to correct this error is to understand clearly that empty space is a delusive concept, the substance of which is non-existent and unreal. It is merely predicated in relation to its correlative corporeal objects. If it is taken as a being term non-being, a negative being, then it should be discarded, because it causes the mind to remain in samsara. In fact there are no external corporeal objects, because all objects are originally of the mind. And as long as there are no corporeal objects at all, empty space cannot be maintained. All objects are of the mind alone, but when illusions arise, objects which are regarded as real appear. When the mind is free from its deluded activities, then all objects imagined as real vanish of themselves. What is real, the one and true mind, pervades everywhere. This is the final meaning of the Tathagata's great and comprehensive wisdom. The Dharmakaya is, indeed, unlike empty space. Hearing that it is explained in the sutra that all things in the world, in the final analysis, are empty in their substance, and that nirvana or the principle of suchness is also absolutely empty from the beginning and devoid of any characteristics, they, not knowing that the purpose of the sutra is to uproot their adherence, think that the essential nature of suchness or nirvana is simply empty. Question, how is this to be corrected? Answer, the way to correct this error is to make clear that suchness or the dharmakaya is not empty, but is endowed with numberless excellent qualities. Hearing that it is explained in the sutra that there is no increase or decrease in the Tathagata Garbha and that it is provided in its essence with all excellent qualities, they, not being able to understand this, think that in the Tathagata Garbha there is plurality of mind and matter. Question, how is this to be corrected? Answer, they should be instructed that the statement in the sutra that, there is no increase or decrease in the Tathagata Garbha, is made only in accordance with the absolute aspect of suchness, and the statement that, it is provided with all excellent qualities, is made in accordance with the pluralistic outlook held by the defiled minds in samsara. Hearing that it is explained in the sutra that all defiled states of samsara in the world exist on the ground of the Tathagata Garbha and that they are therefore not independent of suchness, they, not understanding this, think that the Tathagata Garbha literally contains in itself all the defiled states of samsara in the world. Question, how is this to be corrected? Answer, in order to correct this error it should be understood that the Tathagatagarbha, from the beginning, contains only pure excellent qualities which, outnumbering the sands of the Ganges, are not independent of, severed from, or different from suchness, that the soiled states of defilement which, outnumbering the sands of the Ganges, are not independent of, severed from, or different from suchness, that the soiled states of defilement which, outnumbering the sands of the Ganges, merely exist in illusion, are, from the beginning, non-existent, and from the beginningless beginning have never been united with the Tathagatagarbha. It has never happened that the Tathagatagarbha contained diluted states in its essence and that it induced itself to realize suchness in order to extinguish forever its diluted states. Hearing that it is explained in the sutra that on the ground of the Tathagata Garbha there is samsara as well as the attainment of nirvana, they, without understanding this, think that there is a beginning for sentient beings. Since they suppose a beginning, they suppose also that the nirvana attained by the Tathagata has an end and that he will in turn become a sentient being. Question, how is this to be corrected? Answer, the way to correct this error is to explain that the Tathagatagarbha has no beginning, and that therefore ignorance has no beginning. 
If anyone asserts that sentient beings came into existence outside this triple world, he holds the view given in the scriptures of the heretics. Again, the Tathagatagarbha does not have an end, and the nirvana attained by the Buddhas, being one with it, likewise has no end. 2. The biased views held by the Hinayanists because of their inferior capacity, the Tathagata preached to the Hinayanists only the doctrine of the non-existence of Atman and did not preach his doctrines in their entirety. As a result, the Hinayanists have come to believe that the five components, the constituents of samsaric existence, are real, being terrified at the thought of being subject to birth and death, they erroneously attach themselves to nirvana. Question, how is this to be corrected? Answer, the way to correct this error is to make clear that the five components are unborn in their essential nature and, therefore, are imperishable, that what is made of the five components is, from the beginning, in nirvana. Finally, in order to be completely free from erroneous attachments, one should know that both the defiled and the pure states are relative and have no particular marks of their own being that can be discussed. Thus, all things from the beginning are neither matter nor mind, neither wisdom or consciousness, neither being nor non-being, they are ultimately inexplicable. And yet they are still spoken of. It should be understood that the Tathagatas, applying their expedient means, make use of conventional speech in a provisional manner in order to guide people, so that they can be free from their deluded thoughts and can return to suchness, for if anyone thinks of anything as real and absolute in its own right, he causes his mind to be trapped in samsara and consequently he cannot enter the state filled with true insight, i.e., enlightenment.